President, thank you, uh, Senator Port, for bringing this uh, amendment forward. What a good time for us to enshrine, in principle, in legislation, the idea that uh, the language spoken in a physician's office is based in science and medicine and compassion for the individual in front of you and not based in legislation written in this chamber or in the other chamber or anywhere in St. Paul. Uh, you know, the, the, there are several reasons for this. Uh, one is that the, the practice of medicine obviously is in constant evolution and flux. Yesterday's dogma is today's fallacy, and any legislation we might encase in, in, in law saying what a physician should say to a patient is likely to be wrong by tomorrow morning. Patients have also an unlimited spectrum when they come into the office of emotional overlying conditions, physical superimposed ailments, language and cultural difficulties, variances in medical competence, and a spectrum of presentations, none of which are receptive to legislated language uh, that is mandated to be spoken. You know, I, I look at the, in particular, the repealer that is included in Senator Port's amendment, section 145.4242, I'm just going to read a few sentences from it, Mr. President. Requires the physician under Section 1, the female is told the following. Not the patient, not the Minnesotan, not the citizen. The female is told the following by the physician. Particular medical risks, including risks of infection, hemorrhage, breast cancer. There is no risk of breast cancer. Danger to subsequent pregnancies and infertility. The female is informed by the physician that medical assistance benefits may be available for prenatal care, that the father is liable to assist in the support of her child, that she should receive the printed materials described in another section. So we've got some printed materials there that the female is going to learn about. Members, this is on its face, pedantic and patronizing and paternalistic and insulting, not just to physicians, but to every Minnesotan who reads this. And to describe it as female and distinguish that it is only going to be females is overtly sexist. Uh, and, and unfitting for a place in Minnesota law. Uh, let's support the Port Amendment and get this off the books.